<clears throat> I, I, uh, I'm not sure if this is filming the right direction or if I'm sideways here, but uh, <clears throat> being sideways is cool too. So, step one in the revolution, you know, you go sideways, you flip around. So I'm just uh, going to talk about the Jimmy Dore thing and the AOC Pelosi vote today, which um, is, you know, making a storm in left Twitter. And I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to do a nuanced take. I mean, I already did two videos about this, which I think were, you know, relatively nuanced, but um, I guess just to continue in the same vein. Um, oh, that's cool reflection. Anyway, so Dora had a plan to force the vote to telling the squad, um, specifically addressing AOC, I think, because she was on Twitter uh, a lot. And maybe, I don't know if he was, I'm not sure how this started, if it was in a tweet or a video or something, but, you know, he told, said that they should, the squad should not vote for Pelosi unless Pelosi agrees to a Medicare for all House uh, floor vote. And um, so because Pelosi was nominated again, you know, like uh, whenever that was a, a few weeks ago or a month ago or something, they nominated her. And uh, so, yeah, the idea was to either, to either, to basically abstain from voting if Pelosi won't, uh, won't uh, go ahead and do a floor vote on Medicare for all which absolutely she should do, you know, it's a, I mean, she should have done it every second she's ever been in there, but um, definitely now. And, uh, you know, they can't really pretend they care about our health. You know, it's funny, like they shut down the economy and they do all this stuff. And that's one reason I'm skeptical of a lot of uh, the way that government's you know, at least taking advantage of the COVID situation because I know how they are. And when they say, oh, we're just, you know, we're shutting down the economy, we're doing all this stuff for public health. It's like they don't do things for public health. You know, like if, if they cared about public health, they would try to give Medicare for people. Like they, you know, like they're not doing, you know, I mean, I guess they're going to do whatever the vaccine and stuff, but they don't care about people's health, you know, like they rather us be poor. They rather us not have uh, health insurance because that's what their donors, owners, you know, uh, require of them. So, you know, because we have to, I mean, they're the insurance, health insurance industry and big pharma and all that together are like, you know, one of the major underwriters of the Democratic Party. And um, so, yeah, they can't let us, they can't care about our health. They can't care about public health because they're paid not to. I mean, they, they could, but that's their real job. That's their more lucrative job compared to their official title as supposed representatives of the people. Uh, so yeah, absolutely, they should force a vote. But um, so like I was like supporting it or like, you know, that sounds good. I mean, the main thing is it's a great impulse, you know, like Jimmy Dore is a passionate, a passionate dude and, you know, like, and, you know, sometimes he's a, a pain in the ass like he was I think he was too negative on Bernie a lot of the time in the uh, 
primary, but then again, it's like maybe it just didn't matter and maybe there needed to be somebody like him. I mean, yeah, he, he like, like a lot of Tulsi crowds, he kind of like uh, was at least harsher on Bernie than he was on, on Tulsi. But, but part of that is that, you know, he has very specific uh, ideological agreements with Tulsi, which is fair enough. And, you know, I do too. Um, you know, particularly anti-war, anti kind of deep state and all that. Um, but they, um, so it's a great impulse because the, the main point is, or there's two main points or there's probably a lot of main points, but some of the main points are we need Medicare for all, and at the very least we should get a floor vote on Medicare for all so we know who's on our side, who's voting for it and against it, and you know, just so it's out in the open instead of them just saying, oh, it's impossible, and leave it in at that, at least trying. And um, so that's that would be a great thing. Another thing is that Pelosi is trash and that, you know, <clears throat> she shouldn't really be speaker. Um, so, but these are kind of all separate issues. And in a way, like, maybe it was perfect the way this happened. But at this point, um, like, it was a great impulse because those things are all true. At the same time, the specifics of the plan were not like necessarily clever in terms of, uh, you know, in the way that they were meant to be, I guess, in terms of real politic or just, uh, just in general, like, because <clears throat> like these people, in terms of Pelosi being a, a terrible speaker, the answer to that is to nominate somebody else not to let the Republican win, you know? Not that I would really care if the Republican won. Like, to me, you know, they're the same party. They work for the same people. Um, but the the point is, yeah, not that, like, it matters. Like, it doesn't probably doesn't matter, like, who's the speaker. But um, they... Um, but it's, like the things didn't fit together like i mean hey if it would have worked it would have worked and i think it may be all to the best but i'm just saying be nuanced don't just say like with us or against us kind of deal because um you know it's not actually the plan doesn't quite make the sense that it that people think it makes um, you know, the fundamental reasons for that are, you know, like I said, if, if, if the issue is Pelosi, then nominate somebody else, you know, try to actually replace her with somebody better. Don't just be like, Pelosi's trash, so we'll have a Republican speaker, which is going to be trash too. You know, like, that's not, um... That's not any answer to the Pelosi question. The answer to the Pelosi question is to run against her, nominate somebody else, run against her. And that's the issue. Nobody in the squad would run against her. Nobody in Congress, nobody in the, or, you know, no Democrat or leftist, no, uh, nobody in the progressive caucus or any of that would run against her. You know, I tried to recruit uh, Rashida uh, Tlaib and you know, I did videos where I talked about it. I tagged her a lot of times about it. No luck, obviously. Um, and, you know, that, that would have been the only real solution as far as, like, Pelosi goes. Not just like, oh, we're going to abstain. It's like, that's ridiculous. Like, if you're not going to run against her, then just, you might as well just vote for her. Because you're essentially voting for her if you refuse to run against her. So that's that's one illogical... Like, like again, I'm not holding this against Dora at all. Like, Dora never claimed to be um, some, you know, 
brilliant 4D chess playing strategist. Uh, he's, you know, I mean, he honestly calls himself an idiot sometimes. <laughs> he's like, I'm not, I'm a dumbass, but, uh, and he, he's like, yeah, you know, like, I'm an idiot, but I, even I know, like, we need Medicare for all. And he's not an idiot, but, um, but at least in this instance, I think he was more strong on impulse than on strategy. Um, although, again, I think that in unforeseen and unplanned ways, it will probably work out for the best, uh, the fact that he put this forward. Um, but, but the actual plan was not, uh, as far as I could tell, it was not like a specifically clever plan. It was like a, a really random way to try to force a, a floor vote on Medicare for all. Um, and I mean, one reason why, uh, the other, another main reason why it's, um, why it doesn't make quite the sense, I think, that people treat it as is that everyone in the squad voted for Biden. Right. I mean, everyone in the squad, you know, there's nobody in the Democratic Party. There's no elected Democratic official that at least has said that they did anything but vote for Biden in November. And Biden is, you know, if anything, much worse than Pelosi. So, you know, it's like, um, like these are the people, they all just voted for a rapist, like a rapist, known war criminal, uh, racist, you know, uh, fascist in November. But, but now they're going to not vote for Pelosi and they're going to give the House over to a Republican uh, for, for a vote, just to have a floor vote for the record. Um, so yeah, I'm not excoriating door or anybody for this because it's, you know, it's complicated stuff. It's politics. I li live and breathe politics. So, you know, and even me, it kind of took me a while to think this all out. And, and I'm sure I still am not like, uh, having, you know, I'm sure there's probably still holes in my take on it, but, um, but that's why it's strong on on um you know it's like his heart i think was in the right place door's heart and people supporting him and uh but the specifics of the plan um the strategy of the plan i don't think was the uh you know the uh the great idea that it that it was kind of hailed as, but at the same time it was a great idea because, um, you know, even though it's silly to think that somebody, you know, that all these people who voted for a known racist, rapist, war criminal in in November are going to turn around and 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 not vote for Pelosi, who's not even necessarily as bad, who actually I think did vote against the Iraq War. Or, stained or something as opposed to Biden who voted for and, and strenuously supported the Iraq war. Um, so Biden is worse than her. I mean, she's, she's evil and, 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 um, and evil. One of the main, one of the worst things she's done is just to support him um, and to rig this election or, you know, help just part of the whole democratic psyop that helped to, uh, you know, keep Bernie from uh, any kind of success and keep the Greens out and everything. Um, but yeah, so so that's a silly thing to think that they were ever going to do that. You know, people who vote for a racist rapist are not going to give the House to a Republican because of Nancy's ice cream or, or even her, you know, genuinely uh, more uh, corrupt uh, actions, whatever, because they pale in comparison probably to Biden's. And yeah, you got to know who you're dealing with. I mean, just 
whatever. Just like, I'm not excoriating anybody. I'm not scolding anybody, but I'm just saying like, it's like the impulse is good. The, um, the kind of general push of it is good, but the specifics of it were not uh, necessarily uh, optimal or even logical or kind of, yeah, N not logical to think somebody's going to vote for a race, uh, racist rapist and then, and then turn their nose up at Pelosi. Like, uh, but... You know, like, I mean, if anything, they should have used this pressure on them before. I mean, they should have used the pressure on them also to replace her, to run against her. But the thing is, like, it just seems clear that that was never in the cards. Like, when they joined the Democratic Party, it's like an old, you know, old boys, old girls club, whatever. And the, the people who have seniority are running the game. And you, they didn't feel like, they, I mean... Why do you even join a party? Like, if you're going to join a party, generally, it's because you want to follow the leadership of that party. Otherwise, like, you might as well just start your own party. Um, I mean, you could say maybe they, it was just too hard to start their own party, and maybe some people hoped that they would do some kind of hostile takeover of, uh, of the Greens, the Greens, sorry, of the uh, Democrats. But... Um, you know, obviously that was never really the case, you know, that's, I mean, that's been clear since almost day one. And, um, I mean, I think maybe when uh, AOC was first, um, first elected, I think that was what maybe her first vote was to confirm to vote for Pelosi. Uh, and that was even at a time, I think, where there was, there were maybe other candidates and other people voting against her among the Democrats and stuff. Um, so yeah, this was never going to happen. It was never logical to think it was anywhere near in the cards, sort of like holding a gun up to their head. Uh, but is I think it's still a great thing that Jimmy did it, and I think it's a great thing that people supported it. Uh, Mainly just because it it shows our shows you know where we're at that a we hate Pelosi we hate Pelosi so much that we're you know fine with um, a Republican Speaker of the House um, to replace her uh, so you know that that's a powerful message that I that I hope. Uh, Pelosi and and the squad are are getting from from us on Twitter and elsewhere, um, and 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 it shows that how much we want Medicare for all, you know, because I, I suppose for some they might not even hate Pelosi, but they just are doing it for the Medicare for supporting it for the Medicare for all, um, and then but I think one of the biggest. Uh, or at least equally maybe important thing is that it um, we triggered like you know Jimmy Dore triggered all the centrists and all the like damn loyalists and whatever I don't know you guys might be getting sick of this I just think I like these cool like reflections but it might be confusing so um but that light behind me is probably bad. Camera, camera optic things, but all right, here. So Pelosi, yeah, we triggered all these people and, and it's beautiful. You know, like the left needs to, the left needs to fight amongst itself honestly like i mean if the left was a genuine left or if more of the people in it were genuine leftists then we wouldn't need to because it would be it would, people would be legit and then we just need to unite and and uh move forward but um 
the fact is that, uh, you know, a lot of us have known for a long time that a lot of people, I mean, certainly among the Democrats are, are a lot of people, a lot of them are like saboteur, <clears throat> saboteurs and like, uh, you know, basically either corporatists or corporate corporatist apologists or or just kind of i don't know gatekeepers that virtue signal but help keep any substantial change from happening and then there's the kind of uh culture warriors who don't care about <laughs> the you know public welfare but they you know weaponize hot button cultural issues to try to demonize the republicans and stir up all the Trump derangement syndrome or whatever. Um, so a lot of that cuts across the people who would identify as centrist and people who identify as leftist. Um, and so I think it's been beautiful over the last like few weeks or since whenever Dora came up with the thing that they've just been outing themselves like left and right. Um, you know, like, I think, I don't know who all the players are. I haven't really followed it. I've heard that uh, Chank or Uyghur or whatever, you know, the Young Turks guy, that he was basically trashing door. Um, somebody, Conster, Naomi Conster or something. I don't know. Like, yeah, so I don't know all the, I, but I know that a lot of them are, blue checks and big accounts and and a lot of their followers like honestly it kind of seems like they outnumber us on twitter i mean maybe it's just because they have bots or something but when you see these like stupid like blue checks like trashing door with these terrible takes like just saying like oh well you know how are we gonna progress if you're being mean to the people that are trying to do a good job you know like those takes um like i mean it's hilarious and uh but but i've just noticed like a lot of times they like i haven't seen us really ratioing them i mean there's a lot of us there's a lot of us who i mean i've been in my nuanced way supporting door or at least like supporting him against his uh, haters on this. But, um, but like, I don't see us ratio. I see like tweets like that, terrible tweets that have like, you know, 10,000 likes or whatever. And like maybe 500 uh, or, you know, just like much less of us actually pushing back. But, there, but still, I think for our numbers, we're strong because we're, you know, a lot of us are active and, you know, a lot of us are, I mean, even if the plan was not super clever in its details, at least I think a lot of us of its supporters are more cognizant politically than the people opposing it with these terrible takes. And um, so I think it's invaluable in that sense to smoke out, to, you know, like weed out all these, um, all these saboteurs and, and uh, backstabbers, like just terrible takes, like just saying like an AOC herself, the, that's probably the cherry on top is that um, we triggered AOC or I don't know if it was door that said, like she said that somebody said, you know, F you and F anybody who protects you. I'm guessing door said that, uh, but, um, so she said that is violence. You know, she tweeted this, it's like classic woke culture warrior, uh, response to something like it's literal violence and um so or i don't know if she said she didn't probably say literal but still it's just uh it's just such a such a terrible like response when somebody who i mean i think jimmy door 
I don't know where Jimmy Dore lives. I think he might be even in New York. So he might be her like direct constituent. Maybe not, but it doesn't matter. Like we're all basically all of Congress's constituents and he has every right to tell her off. Like, and she's saying that there, this is happening to her. She's being targeted based on a slight, you know, difference of uh, strategy or something. But the thing is, like, <laughs> like, that's so disingenuous because she knows full well if she's actually paid attention to anything Doris said that, like, he's been calling her out for, you know, at least the last, like, year or so or probably longer and on a lot of terrible things that she's done, you know, like a lot of ways, like calling Nancy Pelosi mama bear, voting for her before, you know, not running against her. Um, so I think it's great. Like, I think it's great because we've, you know, flushed out all these, uh, like the fake left is not inconsiderable in size. It's pretty big. But... I think it should be separated from the real left, you know, like it's, they're, they're saboteurs and, and it is very dangerous to the movement to have them just kind of lurking amongst us as if we're all on the same page. And then it's only takes some uh, event like this to see like, oh my God, they're really, really not on the same page. Like they, they, they put tone policing ahead of like, you know, public health and like democracy so um yeah so they've all been like scolding door tone policing him whatever um and and yeah to to call it violence is just like so tone deaf like i mean that was i don't know i feel like that that's that would go over well you know with the college woke crowd and some twitter activists maybe they're like oh yeah that's violence and she's a woman of color and he's a white male and and you know they'll it's like in the same vein of that type of these kind of like emotional uh, uh appeals and kind of hot button buzzwords whatever um so so yeah like it's great that this is happen and also so it's like and it's also put a lot of pressure on the squad it's made like both the squad and pelosi and twitter and much of the world like very aware that there's a lot of us who conditionally support you know conditionally we're supporting the squad and but we're very you know very conditionally like very willing to um discard her as as our you know as any kind of leader or politician if she um if she was seen to not be um serving our interests and that's a great thing you know like we need to show them that and we need to you know we need to live by that and ideally we need to use that and pair it with even you know better strategies like more logical um you know pragmatic uh strategies that will work or that will do something um but this one even if it wasn't logical it was great and in a way it was better because it wasn't logical because like if it was logical maybe the logic would just take over but instead it was kind of such a Rorschach that it just brought out like almost people's subconscious, you know, like it just, and people couldn't address like directly the real things like, you know, Pelosi, like, and I wish people would address the issue of why didn't the squad run against Pelosi? That's the issue, not like whether they vote for her. Of course, they're not gonna vote for the Republican. Of course, they're gonna vote for the Democrat. But why didn't they run against her? You know, that's the issue. And so, but that was danced around and instead you just had all these theatrics and all this uh, hand-wringing and, and tone policing and stuff. 
and really across a lot of the left, like, I mean, a lot of people that I would not, like people who are like revolutionaries and ACAB and, I mean, of course, this year has been the year of like AstroTurf, ACAB, Antifa, BLM, who are really actually corporate hacks, like supporting Biden, like, you know, people like Brooklyn Dad who are like Antifa. I don't know. So it's the year of that, but um, but it's great to like flush these people out and put a real division because they're not real leftists. They they tried to, you know, they were willing to give us Trump just to keep Bernie out. You know, like I mean, it seems like it's not going to end up that way, but they were fully willing to do that, and. They elected a racist, rapist, you know, war criminal. So, you know, they're not leftists. Like, they just they just use some of the buzzwords and, and virtue signals sometimes. And, and I think it really shows that AOC is, is not really genuine, you know? Like, she's just more concerned ab about appeasing uh, the party leadership than anything else so yeah so we need a new political party is the real deal like you know if they were not gonna like if they had run against her and won then they could maybe change the course of the democratic party but since the, not even one person no squad member yeah at least nobody in the squad like uh even you know absented themselves or or refused to vote for her or or would run against her i mean to me i don't care whether they voted for her or not i care that they wouldn't run against her of course they're going to vote for her that that was um very imaginative to think that there was ever a chance they wouldn't vote for her but they should have run against her and the fact that they won't is to me the nail in the coffin of this idea of like the new progressive Dems or whatever. Um, so we need a new party. And I mean, I say we need a new party because I think that I would say that we need the Green Party, we need to build the Green Party. But it seems to me that too many people in the Green Party are too uh, stuck in their ways to really become any sort of genuinely like populist uh, left party and specifically they're you know on identity politics issues they seem to be more than willing to just uh throw everything under the bus for that and alienate uh you know the masses basically and um so what we should do is either try to take over the mpp because the MP, movement for a people's party is supposed to be a people's party. And so it's perfectly legitimate to hijack it from them, from the people that have been dominating it, because it's not a people's party. At least it's not a people's movement at all. Like it's, it's the worst. I mean, you know, there's definitely decent people like associated with it or at least supporting it. But I would say most of the leaders of the MPP and the hashtag United Left, which kind of dovetails or is the, kind of the same thing, are the worst. Um, I mean, they're good. A lot. Some of them are good on like this, like the door thing. Like I think a lot of them took Dora's side to their credit, but um, but in terms of like woke uh, sabotage of the left they um which i think is a huge issue and and i think if you talk to if you ask a lot of regular working class people and, and including a lot of people of color about what they think of the left a lot of them are very distrustful and a lot of that that has to do with this sense of that a lot of the left just kind of weaponizes woke pc stuff um and you know doesn't really care about people it's just all these uh weird dogmas that they use to beat people over the head with so um 
so yeah, like those people are like a mafia in Twitter, at least a lot of them. Like they're like a mafia in Twitter and elsewhere they like cancel they've you know they've basically canceled half the left already and i always have suspected or at least wondered if they're paid shills you know if it's paid sabotage by the dems or by the government or you know the ruling class or something to sabotage the green party and to sabotage the left in general because like they like the united left people and the, probably the movement for people's party like they took so many people's like information, but then they turned on so many of us. Like they're turn they turn on uh, they turn on me, they turn on a lot of people I know over like uh, you know political correct issues, and um, they now they're uh, reportedly purging uh, Tulsi Kratz from their ranks, uh, including. Um, you know, some Asian Americans, I think, who, you know, are trying to have a voice in politics and feeling very uh, betrayed by these uh, largely white, you know, um, movement for people's party leaders. And uh, so, yeah, like, they they promised a people's party, a movement for a people's party. So they're supposed to have a convention either in March or maybe it'll be delayed, but it's, I think it's supposed to be like anybody who signs up for it can, can go, or it might be, um, you know, remote kind of, uh, internet convention, but, um, they, Basically, everybody should just sign up and then take it over from them and turn it into like a genuinely populist, like, you know, left party that focuses on real meat and bones issues and doesn't just weaponize, uh, you know, culture war stuff just to chase clout or just to sabotage the left or, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, they just repeatedly do that. Um, so yeah, we should do that. I'm, I'm planning to do that if I can. Uh, and just to outvote them and take it over from Nick Brana and the other people that are, I mean, it's been described as just the Nick Brana show, basically, like they call it the people's party, but it's, in practice, it's just Nick Brana and, and a bunch of people around him that defer to him. Um, and, and I just never trusted them because they're no better than the Green Party. If anything, they're worse than the Green Party. I mean, they're, yeah, they're almost, yeah, they're basically objectively worse than the Green Party. So it's like, why, why make a new party if you're just going to be the Greens but worse? But like the Greens, but but I mean, like one of the prominent um, MPP people on Twitter was saying like that the Greens are too far left, and so we so we're going to create this movement for a People's Party. But meanwhile, he's also one of these super woke people. So when he says left, I guess he means like, I'm, you know, he means like economic left. So. <laughs> He wants a less economic left, but more culture war left, or quote unquote left uh, MPP. So yeah, we should take that over. But you know, they might be they might have some uh, ways to sabotage it if we do take it over. You know, maybe they could just maybe they hold the rights to the organization. They could just dissolve it, or they could just change the rules or something. So I, it's not anything to bet on really it's just something to try like we should absolutely try it and you know and it might succeed and that would be cool and then we would have a a people's party uh but if that if that doesn't work then we need to start a new party i think you know unless there's some party that i don't know about that's hiding in the wings that meets the criteria that we need um basically being you know economic left leftist in the sense of looking out for the little guy looking out for the oppressed looking out for society but not this kind of like weaponized identity politics left which 
seems you know which is like the kind of stuff the corporate left loves you know like all these corporations love that stuff um and and just a lot of it is either deliberately to sabotage the left or it just has or that's just what it does and they're doing it for some other reason um so yeah i think we definitely need a new party either take over the people's party or start a new one um because